A sinus lift is the term for a special bone augmentation procedure that is performed in the upper jaw. Years of toothlessness, periodontitis, and or other diseases lead to the deterioration of the denture supporting bone. In addition, the maxillary sinus in the upper jaw gets bigger and bigger due to toothlessness. An unfortunate reality is that in many cases there is not enough bone left to support implants and both the quality and quantity of the existing jawbone are crucial for successful implantation. In modern dentistry, numerous surgical techniques exist for augmenting jawbones in a gentle and painless manner. Sinus lift surgery is a special technique for the upper jaw. The mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus is lifted through a small window and bone substitute material is inserted between the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus and the remaining bone. Depending on the bone substitute material used, the foreign substance should turn into bone within four to eight months, making an implantation possible again. Depending on the condition and the amount of the patient's existing remaining jawbone, it is possible to implant immediately during a sinus lift surgery, or to place the implant sometime after the bone augmentation procedure. A distinction is made between an internal and an external sinus lift. In an internal sinus lift, the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus is prepared through the implant's drill hole. The cavity created is then inserted with bone material. The fact that the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus is intact prevents the bone material from getting into the maxillary sinus from the top. The internal sinus lift is particularly suitable if just a few teeth need to be replaced. The external sinus lift is the more suitable option if a number of teeth need to be replaced and there is very little bone left to work with. In this case, a small lateral window to the maxillary sinus is created. The bone substitute material is inserted through this window. In the video, you see a patient who, with the exception of two roots, no longer has any teeth in the upper jaw. Golden caps were fastened to the roots, providing a better hold for the full dentures during the bone augmentation procedure. You will now see an external sinus lift. The oral mucosa has already been lifted to the side, and a small window has been created through the remaining thin bone towards the maxillary sinus. One can clearly observe the lifting and lowering of the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus in the bone window. This is synchronous with the breathing and is a sign that the maxillary sinus's mucous membrane is intact. You can see how a white collagen membrane is inserted into the maxillary sinus in order to protect the maxillary sinus's mucous membrane before the bone substitute material is injected. Now the bone material is carefully pushed into the newly created cavity as gentle pressure is applied. In other cases, a reconditioning of the bone substitute material with the tologous body cells or growth factors might be necessary, but not here. Human bone heals quickly. Finally, everything is sewn up. The patient receives his prosthesis and thus has well-fitting dentures until the time of the implantation. In this case, the implants are placed at a later point in time because the remaining bone was not sufficient for an immediate implantation. Some of the possible alternatives to implant surgery include a different surgical technique or a removable dental prosthesis. If a fixed dental prosthesis is definitely desired, then one could, for instance, also screw a bone block onto the jaw ridge, not raising the jaw ridge towards the interior, as in the sinus lift, but towards the outside. This is known as an onlay plastic. The onlay plastic technique can provide better aesthetic results, but unfortunately carries more risks and is thus usually only used for aesthetic purposes. Another alternative possibility when there is insufficient bone material for implantation would be to forego fixed dentures altogether and request the preparation of a partial or full prosthesis. The risks associated with this procedure are negligible when dealing with an experienced surgeon but complications may nevertheless arise in individual cases, each of these possibly requiring additional measures. Every additional necessary measure that is taken may subsequently be associated with further complications, which may be life-threatening within the course of the procedure. Right now, we will only discuss sinus lift-specific complications, which are as follows. The bone substitute material may not turn into bone, in such a case, an implantation is not possible. 
The bone substitute material may grow into the connective tissue. In this case, an implantation is not possible either. A rupture of the mucous membrane of the maxillary sinus could lead to the loss of the bone substitute material. An implantation would not be possible in this case. An inflammation of the augmentation can cause several problems. This inflammation can spread to the neighboring structures, such as the maxillary sinus or the eyes, etc. Removal of the augmentation material in a second surgical procedure is often necessary. There's the possibility of injury to neighboring structures, such as nerves, cheeks, and blood vessels, with the respective consequences, such as maxillary sinusitis, or sensation disturbances in the lip and upper jaw. Fortunately, such complications have become very rare due to positive developments in medicine during the past decades.